All right, this is week five or progress update five, I believe, of the butterfly simulation. Um, this week is not a ton more progress, but a lot of new things. So let's get right into it. If we can see my screen here, we have these cute little pots. I'll go over to this one. Um, they're really low poly, but they work perfectly for what we're what we're looking for here. So uh, these pots are meant to pick up plants, which is one of the um, the milestones that we have on the on the documentation sheet. Um, so when I go ahead and play the game, and I'll show the rest of these new plants off too as we're playing, we can go up to this pot, and you'll see some green lines. These are debug lines I haven't taken out yet, but when we press E, we can pick up the pot. That's kind of cute. I like it. And then over here, we have these plants. Let me open this up real quick. We have these plants. Um, we'll go into a little more depth about them in a minute, but um, there's a bunch of different meshes for them. It looks like a lot of them chose the same mesh here, this violet, but we'll take the sunflower. Oh wrong button so we can actually put down the pot by pressing E and looking at the ground or we can right click to pick up a plant so here's our plant and these plants are randomly generated um, meshes I think I have seven of them right now they use the Quixel bridge library of plants the 3d mega scans um, their job essentially is to feed and attract butterflies um, the butterflies have been changed now, uh, instead of just being able to pick up any butterfly anywhere, you now need to befriend them. Um, so, when uh, the way that we befriend them is we walk up to them with a plant, and once he sees it, he's going to come over to it. And their rotation is a little off here, uh, we'll ignore that for now. But after a little while, he's going to become our friend, and we can walk him around with this pot of course, or we can drop him on the ground, and he'll sit there. After a while, he'll become our friend, and hopefully not bug out with the new collision. But uh, once he goes down to the ground, we can pick him up. And he won't back into this plant again unless he goes out of the render range and sees it. <laughs> and he did. So, that's cool. Um, I'll go ahead and yank him off of that thing. And then we can take him in here, and we can put him in the uh, greenhouse, and... And if we he had colors that we wanted, we could totally just oh goodbye. We could totally just let him uh, fly around. I think he's continually. I think since we took him off the plant, he's mad. But um, yeah. Uh, right now there's no checks for multiple butterflies, so technically I can kind of cheat here and pick up a few butterflies on this. Yeah, come here. <laughs> um, but each plant has an individual feeding location, as you can see here. Uh, the the check for the rotation isn't working properly, but it'll be fixed soon. It's not really a big bug. There's our friend back again. I thought he would come back. Um, so they have this collision now, and the, one of the issues with that is that when they see collision, they turn around. But if they're in collision when they turn around, they will just continually like jump back and forth. As you can see, that one does right now. And then he should come up through the ground here in a second. Yeah. Um, and then this will start the breeding process. So... Um, now that we have more than one butterfly in here, we'll get an egg. There's a butterfly egg right there. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of the core gameplay mechanic of the game. Now that I have these butterflies in here, and that egg was green, so I imagine it might be the lower color of that wing or something, um, it'll receive the traits of the parents, and uh, you'll be able to breed the butterfly that you want um, with the right colors that you want. In the future, there'll probably be some sort of achievement for different uh, butterfly breeding patterns and things like that um, but for now uh, that's what it's going to be um, let's see so we have butterfly befriending all right so the next thing kind of on our list here that's all that was done for this week um, besides a bunch of debugging I had some monstrous time with some circular dependencies um, just yeah lots of lots of of weird circular dependencies my design could definitely have been better um, so we're going to start with a the procedural terrain generation. Um, I just started working on this recently. It might be a little complex for some of you to 
to here, but um, points in 3D space are called voxels. These are, are um, well, they're called vectors in UE5, but they can technically be called voxels as well. Here I have a procedural mesh. It, this is hard-coded to procedurally generate eight vertices in a cube shape area. Um, and the idea here is that we're going to create the procedural mesh by connecting these vertices. So you can see here we have vertice, you know, 0, 2, 3, 1. They all have the names next to them. And if we connect using triangles, one of these vertices, so we'll do 1, 2, and 3, with the triangle being each point in the vertice, and hit play. This actually might not have worked because I think I have the code. Um, I think I have the code changed here. Let me try doing this. Yeah, so you can see the triangle up there in the sky. It was below the ground before, that's why you couldn't see it, but that'll be a mesh. And then we're going to procedurally generate using using um, sound or noise, um, whether these triangles are going to be air or ground or how they're going to connect to the cubes around them. And this is also known as, as the uh, marching cubes algorithm, I believe. Um, there's a really good YouTube video that explains it in technical talk really well um, but essentially I think Minecraft but without the cubes um, and what this is allows is it allows us to create uh, terrain that's not just three-dimensional and then up and down left and right but it, I can have multiple surfaces so if I was to just have one flat plane of vertices I couldn't have a cave underneath it or something like that and I think that'd be cool to implement one day and I'd also like to do it for other projects I have planned in the future so um, this will probably take a lot more than than a week to make. Um, we're talking possibly several months. Uh, I'll probably do some progress updates on the procedural terrain specifically, but um, since it's something I want to do in future projects, I thought I might as well, de you know, uh, devote a good amount of time to it. So if you don't see me in the next couple of weeks, that's why. But uh, yeah, I think that's all for today. Um, just a lot more work to do. We'll go ahead and open up the documentation here. Uh, not a lot to check off. The capturing system works now. Different plants. Um, unique terrains in progress. Capturing mechanics. Uh, I think that's about it. So once we get back from that procedural terrain generation checkpoint, uh, we'll be able to continue on this. And I think past that point, especially with how hard procedural terrain can be, this will be the brunt of our of our work here so um we'll be back to the fast paced weekly updates kind of thing after after we finish that so thanks guys